here. She's a leader and she serves in several different offices. So this is my official welcome to you to tonight's first episode of Trailblazers. <laughs> the story of one of our very own. We'll be dealing with leadership. She's young, beautiful, and single. So we're gonna find out how. Yes, and Santa thank you. We're gonna find out how. And she balances her life being a leader, having so many different offices, yet being single. Does she have a lot? How does she cope? You know, does she feel like giving up at times, you know? Because we have many prospective leaders among us. And sometimes we wonder, do pastors have problems? Yes, they do have issues that they go through. So tonight, please help me make welcome none other than our very own missionary, Kimberly Crooks. Thank you. Woo! Welcome. You're our very first guest on our very first episode of Trailblazers. And I just want to say welcome and thank you so much for being bold enough to share your story. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm humbled. What were you like when you were a child growing up and where are you originally from? All right. So I'm originally from Sablamar, Westmoreland. As a child, I was quiet. Well, I was quiet. I was shy didn't, you know, have the courage to step up into things like this. And, but, you know, the Lord ordered my steps in such a way that even though I like to be on the back burner of things all the way around here, he put me right at the front. Praise God. Oh my God. Praise God for that. <laughs> Praise God for that. Um, if you could choose an age to be at forever, what would that be? Forever. And why? Forever. Yes, forever. Forever. Yes, forever. forever. All right, so... I would probably choose the age that I'm at right now. I won't tell you that age, but it's the age that I look like right now. Hope I look very young. But anyways, yes, I would choose the age that I am right now, you know. Right now, I'm not too stressed out. As you said, I'm single. I'm not too stressed out with that side of it, you know, side of life. I'm, yes, seriously, seriously. I don't really love stress, so, you know, I try to stay away from it. Not saying that I won't, Get married one day, hopefully, if it be the will of the Lord. But right now is a good time for me, and I believe that, you know, I would stay at this age. You know, funny enough, you said that stress part of it. What do you mean stress? I mean, what do you know about marriage? You tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That was very good. <laughs> All right, uh, Missioner Kim. So I can definitely understand your background and, you know, how it is now that the Lord has ordered your steps and now you're here in the forefront and not at the back. So he has done a shifting in your life, which I'm very happy for because now you're really impacting lives. And I would want to ask, though, um, if there was ever a time that you felt as if childhood makes no sense, at what age would that be? That would have probably been when I was about, about 16 years old. 16? Yes. Okay. A lot of things were happening. That's when, you know, God really decided to move in my life. And, you know, that's where, well, from a younger age, yes, things were happening. But at the age of 16, I mean, persecution came down and... You know, that was my first time really facing some real struggles, even as it pertains to my family. And, you know, taking up the gospel seriously, taking up the mission seriously, you know, that's when I started to face some things that if you ask that question, what age I would stay forever, I would definitely would not stay at that age, you know. But those struggles, they taught me a lot. So I grew from them. Okay, that's very good. You know, when we have life experiences, it, it, it happens for a reason. We should learn from them. We should grow and be strengthened so we can help someone else along the way. Um, so I noticed you mentioned Bible and praying and stuff like that. Um, at what age did you get saved? I got baptized at the age of 11. I like the I correction. probably got saved when I was about 14, 15 thereabouts. <laughs> Wow, very interesting response. So you were baptized at age 11, but you got saved. 
in your teens. Yes, about people yes. 16. I, I don't All believe right. that I should be a hypocrite to that. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. But tell me something. How, how did you get saved? You know, at the age of 11, currently in our generation, as you can see, it's very difficult and challenging to get even an adult to be baptized these days. The Bible says that he that winneth a soul is wise, but even though you are wise, there are times when you just have to dig really deep into these people's lives to get them to actually accept the Lord. And so you got saved, baptized, sorry, at age 11. Tell us about that. All right, so it wasn't all a decision of my own. I remember one Sunday I was at the altar and I was at the altar, and I was there. I just went because my mother told me to go there. I had no intention of, you know, getting saved, getting baptized at that age, you know, because I believe I was, I wasn't wrong. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing anything bad. I wasn't a, I was a disciplined child. I was just there. I was quiet. I did what my mother said I should do. I had no interest. Yes, church was nice and all of that, but I had no interest in it. And, you know, the way how God just grabbed some people, I think he did that with me. I was there at the altar, and this missionary, she came over, and she started to talk to me. And she was asking if I plan to get baptized. So I was like, dear, you know, not even really answering, you know, giving that kind of, uh, yes, yes, I'm not really, yeah. Not and, you know, I was there, and I was doing that, and she just said, you want to go to hell? So <laughs> I said, no. And... She said, so why are you not baptized today? I said, like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and there I went oh. into the pool. And, you know, okay. it, even though, you know, it wasn't my decision at that time. But as I was getting dressed to go down in the pool, I started to talk to God. And because even though I didn't want to get baptized, my mother made sure that I had a relationship with the Lord. And I started to talk to God. And I said, all right. I this me doing you know? So... Are you this? I me this. So here we go. And I went in there and did it. Okay, wonderful. It's quite interesting. <laughs> you want God help? Yeah. Okay, that was quite interesting. And I'm really happy that you did make the choice because look at you today. You know, there are times when, <laughs> yes, there are times when we, we delay to make a decision not knowing what the future holds, but God knows best. And I'm happy that you made that choice, even though it turned out that kind of scary way, frightening way. But I'm very happy that you did. And so, you know, after getting baptized, and you stated that you got saved at your mid-teens, why would you say that? What exactly was happening in your life at that time? Because, all right, so... But when I got baptized, I was getting serious about it, you know. But, you know, it was a summer right before I went to high school. And then when I got to high school, I was like, all right, I'm getting into this. I wasn't doing anything wrong per se, but I didn't have the mind. I didn't have the mind to serve God at that time. I was just going to church. And, you know, I think I, I fear overcome me at one point. And I didn't want to profess that I was a, a Christian, Christian at that time. Yeah, okay. I didn't want to profess that. But, you know, after a while, I said, it, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. I live my life to please others. So, you know, that's why I wasn't living the life. That's why I didn't get saved, per se, until I was that age. Missionary Kimberly Crooks will be taking our first break at this time. And thank you so much. Please stay tuned. <laughs> Hey, 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 looking for high quality videoing and still photo of your weddings, funerals, church services, or special events? Then call Valtech Media. We offer high definition DVD video formats, high resolution pictures. Got old VHS or audio cassettes? Want to get them converted to DVDs or CDs? Then give them to us. Call us at 892-3222. That's 892-3222. Valtech Media. All you ever need.
trailblazers. We are trailblazers. Trailblazers. We are trailblazers. Describe motivator, innovator, groundbreaker, young people on fire for the savior, youths ascending to heavenly places through the struggles. We now watch the faces. Trailblazers. I will win him. Trailblazers. I that you mean trailblazers? I that we be trailblazers. We now pretend, we know the struggle is real. The presence of this world, oh yes, we are feel. But for Father God, we just have the zeal and a power pop ministry, him start to reveal. Trailblazers, we are trailblazers. I that we name trailblazers. We are trailblazers. It no easy when you start university. It's there you face every kind of adversity. Could I give up in so many cases? Then we remember the heavenly places. Trailblazers. We are trailblazers. Trailblazers. We are trailblazers. Describe it, motivator, innovator, groundbreaker, young people on fire for our savior, youth ascending to heavenly places through the struggles. We now watch the faces, trailblazers. We are trailblazers. I that we name trailblazers. Cause we are trailblazers. I will win him. Cause we are trailblazers. I that we name trailblazers. We are trailblazers. Thank you so much. And welcome to our second segment of Trailblazers. Tonight, our first special guest is missionary Kimberly Crooks. And we are actually talking about her experiences as a young, beautiful single. Sanctified leader. Thank you. So we um, dealt with your background and we knew what it was for you as a child in the faith. And your encouragement to the young people who are currently in the church is to stay. Stay in the Lord. Amen. And, you know, let me ask, um, what would be two of the scriptures that has governed your life throughout these years from the point of baptism to this point in your life? All right, so one particular one, they that wait upon the Lord. Yes, they that wait upon Whoa. the Lord. You know, Whoa. I use that as really the anthem of my life. Just wait on him. He will supply your every need. And that's the next one. So it Whoa. just ties in together. Yes. yes, so those two scriptures. No, as the... National Assistant Secretary. What are your roles and how has that been for you? Well, I'm just getting warmed up in that position, but <laughs> but so far it has been it has been a manageable role. I you know I assist the secretary, obviously, yes. yes. <laughs> so I assist her in whatever events just the other day we had or national youth retreat, yes, youth retreat. So I assisted in that capacity, you know, and also we have had some meetings, you know, with the national youth executives all around um, okay. HBAC. Okay. So I assist in the capacity, assisting the secretary as well as the president, you know, getting things done, okay. not too familiar yet with just about everything so i'm just getting warmed up into it so at a later date we'll talk about that so you're also a missionary at the restoration center ministries the youngest that i know of how was that been did you did you ever feel as if you want to just oh pastor no i don't want this i don't want this at all what was it like when you were told that listen this is the calling on your life and it's gonna be today that you're going to be ordained what was it like what was going through your mind well first of all I didn't know that I was going to you know get the role of a missionary nobody spoke to me 
However, so I couldn't just say no, even though I said no. Okay. However, you know, let me just backtrack a bit. I remember when we just started coming here and yes, you know, we do our little thing on the, up here on the rostrum before there was a choir and then there was a choir and we sing our little two altar, altar call songs. And you know, I felt so comfortable. Then all of a sudden, <laughs> Sister Anita, just come here. Pastor, come touch me. Go down there. Go pray. And I said, no, this man is setting me up. But you know, eventually, when he appointed me to that position, you know, I just had to go with it, even though I said no. I said, no, 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 no. I don't want it. But you know, I just okay. went with the will of the Lord, gave up my will, and stepped out on faith that I could, you know, carry out the role of a missionary. Well, well, very good. Very good. You mentioned um, coming to this church. Um, tell us more about that and which church you're originally mm -hmm. from and how did the transition happen? How has it been for you? Okay, so originally I'm from Holiness Born Again, you know, Sablamar. And coming to this church, I don't know, I just, I remember when our bishop decided to reopen the church and he sent evangelist and Pastor Mary over here and honestly the first Sunday they came I came the Sunday after that and you know God just opened this door Whoa. these doors rather oh and he just provided this ministry big up our pastor and our evangelists put your hands Indeed. together for them yes Indeed. I big them up because you know they have been a part of my growth I didn't just step out on my own will you know God really led me here and in prayer and fasting, I made sure to be specific about what I wanted wow, from God. I was very specific. I said, God, I need this. I need that. I need to be somewhere with you where I, I, I won't die. I won't wither away. And God just really provided this place for me. Wow, I am happy. I'm so grateful to hear that. You know, um, you know moving from one church to another can sometimes yeah. be... Uh, very horrific experience but i'm very happy that the lord as you mentioned was the one that led you here and look at you now blazing that mighty fiery trail and living an astounding life as you're ascending to heavenly places i'm very proud of you missionary kim and keep the keep up the great job i'll say that over and over again i'll definitely do that um also, you are the <laughs> choir director at the Restoration Center Ministries. <laughs> so young, so single, so sanctified, with so many hats on your head. What's it like being a choir director? What's your best moment? And what's that moment that you regret the most, if you do, being a choir director? <laughs> It's rough, rough, <laughs> right? So, being a choir director, once again, who saw me in this position? Nobody. <laughs> I guess God did, yes. yes. But I definitely did not see myself in this position. You know, I saw myself singing, all right. If I should have stayed in staff, I just saw myself singing on the choir, going home, coming back, singing on the choir, going home. Okay. Right, so definitely didn't expect that one at all. Once again, nobody informed me. <laughs> so, but I was just placed in the position, you know, and saying yes, but no to his will, you know. Okay. All right, so the best moment, definitely, when we come together, <laughs> And we really minister, you know, that's the wow. best moment. That's yes. the best feeling to know that you sacrifice so much just to, you know, see the choir doing the best, yes. doing ministering, yes. you know, for God and not being of themselves. <laughs> the worst moments, the opposite of that. So, okay. yes. So I won't go all the way into that. But, that's you know, fine. choir members, the opposite of that. Right. I, I understand. Um, and, you know, you currently live in South and you journey on Tuesday nights, on Thursday nights, on weekends, on Saturdays to have choir practice. And then you're back at church on Sunday from morning to night. 
you know, I, I always hear um, Pastor Mary mention that you're a very committed person and he loves your commitment. And I too can actually see that you're very, very much committed and I admire that. And <laughs> and you know, I just want to hear from you because honestly, I, I live like about 10 minutes away from here. Yeah. And you know, I mean, tired and sometimes you just want to be in your bed, the comfort of your bed, the comfort of your home, mm -hmm. and the entertainment there and all of that. What is it that drives you to keep coming Saturday after Saturday, knowing that on those Saturdays you could have been with your family or could have been otherwise minded? What is your driving force in regards to that? All right, well, you know, the people really drive me. Yes, they, even though I can disappear and, you know, Probably nobody would think anything of it. But you know, my my desire is to, you know, help everyone. It help help S R speaking of Saturdays with the with um choir practice. Yes. I was placed in the role. I know that it was not just of my pastor's will, it was of God's will also. Okay. So if I'm not there and I, you know, exit the ship, then <laughs> Yeah, definitely, okay. that will be a failure. Right. Also on Tuesdays, Thursdays, I'm here for most, most parts of it. If I'm just not available, yeah, I'm just, I won't be able to make it. Like if work just does something to me. Or, but for majority of the time, I try my best to come. Because, you know, it's not all about the titles and all of that. What about right. the Should spiritual aspect of it? I too have to get a word on um, Tuesday nights for, by, from Bible study. I yes. have to, you know, grow in the word as well. On youth nights, I want to, you know, get whatever God has for me that night, just the same. Right. On evangelistic nights, prayer nights, whatever it is, I have to grow spiritually as well. So that pushes me because I can't just be in a role and I'm totally right. outside of God. I'm just right. in the position, but I'm just living humanely. I'm not living on the spiritual side. Right. I'm, I'm so overwhelmed. We've had a lovely conversation and I'm so pleased. I'm so filled with joy to hear your story, your experiences as a young leader. And I'm truly inspired by all that you said. And I, and I encourage you to keep up the good work that you're doing. Now, so we'll be going into Just the Blaze, where you will be giving us that short blazing speech or exhortation that is burning in your heart and just blaze. All right, so <laughs> I'll blaze right now, blaze quickly. Stay in the ship, don't. There are many things that will rock the ship, but it's best to stay, even though you're going through your struggles. I was there, I was going through my struggles as well. I had many struggles with family. I had struggles with friends. I had struggles with persons who hated me for no reason at all. Family who hated me for no reason. Well, the reason is because I'm with God. But you know, my advice is just stay. Whatever situation you find yourself in, stay. That's just my word tonight. Just stay, stay, stay aboard the ship. Don't let go because one day you don't know what will happen. You don't know what God will do for you. God just might turn around that situation, that situation that has been killing you for years. God might just turn it around, you know, just as how Joseph was in the pit. You don't know what will happen after the pit. You don't know what kind of glory God will bring for you. So just Amen. stay in the ship. Amen. Amen. Very profound words from a young woman that has experienced childhood in the church. And her encouragement to you all young people out there is stay. Stay in the ship, no matter what it is. God will turn it around. And here is a perfect example, missionary Kimberly Crooks. And we've come to the end, sadly, of Trailblazers, our interview with missionary Kimberly Crooks, missionary at the Restoration Center Ministries, also our National Youth Department Assistant Secretary, Choir Director, as well as Secretary for the Youth Department at the Restoration Center Ministries. <laughs> Missionary Crooks, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to share your experiences as a leader with
Thus, I was truly inspired and I am really blessed for all that you have shared. And I want to encourage you to remain committed, remain humble, and keep up the awesome job that you're doing. Keep blazing that trail and keep ascending to heavenly places. God bless you. So thank you one and all for being a part of our live audience, Trailblazers first episode. It was awesome and I am grateful to God and I want to say to us all, keep ascending to heavenly places in the Lord. The Lord bless you all. Praise God. Woo!